Hey friends, Justin here. Today I want to talk about one of the most sought after tents on the market. I've received a ton of questions from you guys about this tent and what my thoughts are about it. I actually tried to buy one this winter, but it sold out super quickly and I wasn't able to get my hands on it. As a result, I'm actually borrowing the personal tent of the man who designed this tent, Dan Durston. And if you haven't guessed already, the tent we're gonna talk about today is the Durston x -Mid. This is the first trip out with the tent. I'm gonna be cross country skiing up this closed road here and then camping out in this beautiful winter wonderland. But there's some reasons why I've been slow to pick this tent up and try it out. And that's because there's some features about it and some specs that I'm a little bit uncertain about. And I wanna get this tent out, try it out on this trip and see whether those things are gonna be deal breakers for me or it could end up being my go-to tent when I'm going out with another person or I want a little bit more space when going out on solo trips. We're gonna take a look at a whole bunch of different things on this trip with the X-Mid tent and see if the X-Mid really does live up to all the hype that's out there. I'm taking advantage of this end of April snowfall that we got and I'm gonna head down this hill and we'll see you guys at camp. So I think we reached a good spot to set up camp, nice views, flat surface here, and running water behind me, which is really nice. I'm not gonna have to melt snow, which can be a real pain in the butt. First things first, let's grab the X-Mid out of my pack here, and I can show you what it looks like inside its stuff sack. One of the things that really kind of surprised me about the X-Mid was how compact it packs down. So here we have it inside the stuff sack. It actually compacts quite a bit more as well. So nice and small and fits horizontally in my pack, which I really like. I have a nice flat spot to my right here where I'm gonna set the tent up. And then we're gonna talk about how easy it was to pitch because I've never actually set this tent up before. And we'll look at some of the specs at the same time. So we got the X-Mid all set up. You saw us having a little bit of troubles there getting the stakes into the ground. That's because the ground is frozen underneath the snow here and there's not enough snow on the ground to use the snow stakes that I brought effectively. So I had to go down to the stream and grab some rocks so that they wouldn't pull out of the snow. But it was super easy to set up. The tent only takes four stakes in order to get it fully set up. So one at each corner, which is really unique. And I don't think there's any other trekking pole tent on the market that only takes four stakes to set up properly. As well, it is a trekking pole tent, so it uses two trekking poles, one on that side, one on this side, and you can see that they're a little bit offset from center, and that's a design consideration that allows you to only use four stakes, as well as it makes for some geometry that has steeper sidewalls, and that will hopefully shed snow better, which is something that will maybe get to see tonight and then tomorrow morning. The tent is double walled, so there's a mesh inner here and then you have the fly going around the outside and we'll kind of see over the course of the day whether that mesh is really taut and effective. And we are camping right next to a stream. It's gonna be below freezing tonight, so we will probably get a whole ton of condensation and we'll get a first-hand look at whether the mesh is protecting all my gear from condensation over the course of the night. The nice thing about how the fly and mesh are set up is that it's all attached and all in one so if it is raining out you can set the tent up with the mesh inside you don't have to set the mesh up first and then the fly which is really nice because you've probably all been there with a the traditional freestanding tent where you have to set up the mesh inner first it's raining getting all the inside of the tent wet and then you have to throw the fly on over top of that not the case you don't have that problem with the x-mid here speaking of rain and moisture the fly is made with a 20 denier polyester and polyester does a really good job of not absorbing moisture. It absorbs about a tenth the amount of moisture of sill nylon which is what most tents are made out of. As well when it does get a little bit wet it doesn't say. Weight wise the tent's pretty lightweight. Just the fly and inner weigh 1,025 grams so it's right around that one kilogram mark which is really nice weight for a two-person tent. So that's what I have here. I don't know if I mentioned it yet I have the X-Mid 2 two-person tent. It's 92 inches long and then 50 inches wide. So in theory, it should be able to fit two 
25 inch wide pads next to each other, which is something that I really wanna test out because if I am going with somebody, I want us both to be able to use wide pads and be comfortable while out on the trail. And I did bring a 25 inch pad with me today, so hopefully we'll be able to do some figuring and see if it's gonna work out. But I'm gonna get all my stuff unpacked, poke around the tent a little bit, do some exploring, see, see what it's all about. And then tomorrow morning, we'll see whether it snows overnight, overnight tonight and whether the tent can handle that. And then we'll also talk about everything that I like about the tent and dislike about the tent with my first impressions after using it tonight. Good morning, guys. Had a good sleep. You can actually hear that it's still snowing out, but there's not a lot of snow on the walls of the tent. So let's uh, jump right into the things that I really liked about this tent this morning before we get into some of the things that I'm a little bit wary of. First things first, this thing is spacious. Look how roomy it is. Definitely could fit two 25 inch pads next to each other, which is a big deal for me and something that I was really looking to check out with this tent when taking it on its first journey. Another really great thing about this tent is the attention to detail. An example of that is the side pockets. So you can see they're nice and big and they actually exist. And I like that they're up off the ground. A lot of tent pockets you see, there are these little flaps that you can just tuck things in, but all your stuff ends up just sitting on the ground anyways. I like that this gets it up off the ground. Another thing I wanted to test out on this trip was how well the inner mesh works at protecting the stuff that's inside the tent from any condensation that might be on the walls. And it does a pretty good job. So let's flip over here. You can see my foot box here is pushing up against the mesh, but it's not getting pushed up against the outer wall. Especially these panels that you would be touching with your foot box, they actually stay pretty taut, just the way that the entire tent geometry is set up. Some of the panels aren't so taut, and you can see right here, I push up against, against the wall pretty easily. But the nice thing is the way that this wall is angled is that you'd never have anything really touching that wall that's essential anyways. Those are some of the things I really like about the tent that you can see from the inside. I really want to get outside, see how much snow we might have gotten. So you can see it didn't snow a ton last night, but enough that the tent does have some snow on it and is shedding the snow really, really well. You can see the snow is sticking to some of the spots where there was condensation inside of the tent. And that is something that happened. There was condensation, but I also didn't open up either of the vents. So a nice thing with this tent is that it comes with two vents. You have one at each corner near the ridge line here and you can open them up and I imagine you get pretty good cross draft because they open up pretty big. With all the snow shedding off the tent, I didn't really have any ventilation inside of there at all. So the condensation I did get is pretty much expected. Also, I'm camping right next to a creek, which doesn't help with condensation either. Carrying on with the benefits of this tent, we touched on this a little bit yesterday, but it is made with a sill poly. So it's gonna not absorb as much moisture as a sill nylon, as well as it doesn't sag when wet. Something we saw yesterday as well was how easy it was to set up. Four stakes to set this tent up, and I'd never set it up before, and it went up pretty easy. I didn't get a perfect pitch. As you can see, I do have some sagging where there's snow load, but considering I just threw it up and didn't readjust it at all, it is doing really well, and I think anyone could probably set this tent up really easily. A couple little details that I forgot to mention when we were inside the tent. One is that all the zippers work really, really well. The zippers seem robust. Um, they, they're lightweight, but I think also robust enough that you're not gonna have any problems with them. And then the tie backs are really nice as well. Super easy to use. I can roll back the fly pretty quickly and then still get a nice tight roll. There's also some loops at either end of the ridge line that you could use to tie a string across the top of the tent if you wanna dry things off a little bit. I like that with the way the poles are set up as well, is that you get a little bit of overlap over the door. So if it's only lightly snowing or lightly raining, you could leave the fly open and just have it zip down a little bit and you're gonna get full coverage of everything inside the tent and you're not gonna get things wet but still have really good ventilation. And with talking about that pole structure, we get into some of the things that I'm a little bit more wary about. Because the poles are offset, this tent's designed so that you sleep head to foot. So if you're sleeping with your head at this end, then the other person's feet next to you are next to you on the, the same end. I'm not a big fan of this. Most of the time when I'm sharing a tent with somebody, I'm gonna be sharing it with my girlfriend 
and we like to sleep head to head so that we can have a little kiss goodnight before bed. Another negative has to do with the stakeout point. So the cordage that came with the tent is really short. You don't have a lot of room to work with as well as the loops at the end of the cordage are not big enough for snow stakes, not the biggest deal, you can adjust that, but then you're losing even more length to your line. The next two things are a little bit related. The first one being price. So this tent is quite affordable. I'll put the price in US dollars right up in the corner there. It's not a budget tent by any means. I know a lot of people have been commenting on my budget tent videos asking about what about the X-Mid, what about the X-Mid? But the X-Mid costs 50 to 100% more than some of the budget tents that are out there. So I don't consider it a budget tent, but it is a great value. You get a lot for your money with this tent. And because that it is a tent that I recommend a lot of people look at, hopefully I can get my hands on one before next fall. And that's the kind of elephant in the room with this tent. It's so popular that it's essentially unavailable. The last round of tents when they did become available sold out, sold out super, super quickly. So they're all packed up. I got the X-Mid packed away in my pack here. And there's three things that I really took away from this first impressions trip. First of all is that I was skeptical about how roomy this tent was, but looking at it and putting my 25 inch pad in it, it can easily fit two 25 inch pads next to each other, which is actually very rare for a two person tent and something that I really need if I'm taking out a tent with another person. It's also only a kilogram. You're getting a lot of tent for that weight. You're getting a tent that's double walled, has a lot of functionality and is also made with polyester, which is, has a lot of benefits to it. The third thing is that attention to detail that I mentioned. You can tell that a lot of thought went into each piece of this tent. And a lot of the time when, you're, when you have a tent that's incorporating some new features and design characteristics, those things can come off as gimmicky or not fully fleshed out but other than a few little things this tent functions very very well and everything works as it should i have this tent for another two months i promised dan i'd get it back to him after that amount of time thanks dan for letting me borrow your tent but i'm still gonna be trying to pick up my own personal x-mid at some point it is a tent i can see being my go-to two-person tent and really does live up to all the hype if the x-mid costs a little bit more than you're willing to spend on a tent at this point then go check out a video i'll post right up in the corner there about the 3f ul lanshan one pro tent that tent is about 50 percent less expensive and still an awesome tent and super functional 